Reimagining Success, episode 153. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five. This allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now let's get started on those dreams. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this month's interview. I'm here with Pete Can. So Pete, let's dive straight in and can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing before and what you're doing now? Yeah, sure. So first of all, Anna, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Pete Can, the laughter man, as you can probably see behind me here. And uh, <laughs> I've not always been the laughter man though, Anna. I, I used to, um, no, I say I used to, we still own a chef agency, uh, have done for the last 12 years, supplying chefs to pubs, restaurants, hotels, the hospitality sort of Bristol plus probably about 50 miles and um it was 2016 where I discovered laughter yoga which is sort of what got me into being the laughter man and uh sort of 2019 uh, I'm trying to keep this quite short and concise but 2019 uh I started not working on a Friday that was my mantra I don't work for Fridays and I started using laughter on my Friday so I was like right who can I approach what businesses etc to start um, bringing laughter yoga to their their teams. And then, so that started slowly. And then obviously when COVID came along in March, 2020 and shut down hospitality overnight, I dived into laughter yoga as a mental tool for myself and my well-being because, you know, we can, as, as you're aware, no one could control anything that was going on. And especially, you know, where our business was sort of turning over one and a half million for the last couple of years. And then literally, and like, so Chloe and I were in a real spot really where we we just couldn't oh, so not, really where, where, you know when you can know what's happening so you go well we can judge that but actually as you know nah, nah, we couldn't judge anything so it was um like i say i use laughter yoga as, as a coping mechanism to get through those first few months started laughing online with people and after sort of six weeks i got a booking so I wanted to pay me to laugh online with them. And then uh, and then it just snowballed from there. And now, you know, now I am the laughter man. I, I Like last week, for instance, I did a session for Fujitsu. I did a session for Nando's. You know, these, these are sort of the size of the companies that are booking me at the moment. And the chef agency is, I, I point over this way, because that's where the other office is. Chloe was in the same office as me, but, but I soon realized that actually it's quite hard to work when there's a guy laughing all the time. <laughs> and um yeah so so the chef business is slowly bubbling back up again but now i'm sort of uh, more of a directorship over there so i will you know we have a weekly meeting but most of the time i'm sat in this office or stood in this office laughing amazing i have to i guess the first question has to be what is laughter yoga yeah, sure. So, so laughter yoga is is a, it's a concept where basically we don't need humor and we don't need jokes to laugh. Okay, and your body doesn't know the difference between fake and real laughter. So, mm. what we do, we do lots of different breathing and fake laughing exercises, and within about five to ten minutes, the real laughter just comes from nowhere, and it's just this wonderful, uh, wonderful well being tool. That you know, I mean, the first time I did it, I just I remember I just couldn't stop laughing. I was literally doubled up with stitches, and and you know you know how you feel when you have that laughing fit you, you feel really energized and feel really content and clear in the mind and and um so yeah it's, it's just this daily it's just this practice that where basically you, know, you, you can laugh for no reason and a lot of people look from the outside thinking it's weird and it is a bit weird it's a bit wacky it's a bit silly but hey it it works you know it really does work and it's um yeah so that that's what it is and the yoga bit always gets people a bit like mm. do we doing downward dogs you know are we doing yoga mats do we need any of that it's like well it's not it's all about the yogic breathing so it's all uh, about okay. deep deep breath deep yogic breathing because actually especially when we're sat down so much 20 percent mm. of our oxygen just sits in our lungs and we hardly ever breathe that out but obviously when you laugh ha, 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 you're exhaling that oxygen from your lungs and you're getting fresh stuff back in which Mm. then ultimately gets the endorphins flowing around the body and yeah it just makes you feel really good about yourself which I think we can all need we can all do with some of that can't we it sounds very organic so it doesn't sound like you're sort of oh I'm fed up with this work and I'm going to do uh, obviously the the difficulties of the economic situation and and the hospitality industry 
And then how did you discover laughter yoga? Did you say when you just happened to someone brought you along to a session? You, how did you come across it? So, so I was at a festival. So we go to a festival called WOMAD in, um, in the Southwest and have done for years. And, and this one year, 16, I was walking through the Arboretum and I heard laughter. And I thought there's a comedian on stage. Let's go see who it was. And I was greeted by a hundred people lying on the floor laughing. I was just like, whoa, right. I know I'm at a festival, but what's going on? And there was a sign saying laughter yoga daily at half 11. So I remember I went back and saw Chloe, my wife and the kids and said, look, daddy's going to do laughter yoga tomorrow. Do you want to come? And they're like, it's all right, Pete, you go and enjoy yourself. And uh, so the lying down bit was the end of the session. So when you do a full in-person session, it's about 40 minutes long. So you do all these laughing and breathing exercises and then you lie down. And you just can't stop laughing because everything's touching the floor. If you think you like that, and when you laugh, everything's wiggling and jiggling. And, and you, you obviously hear it, other people laugh, which obviously sets you off as well. But then you have like this calming moment where you sort of bring everyone down. It's like, right, everyone just take a deep breath in. And I remember vividly this lady next to me went <laughs> like that. And it was just like, boom, off we went. And, and the whole hundred people just starts laughing again. And it's... um. Yeah. And then you do a meditation at the end of it where it's just like a nice deep grounding meditation. So you think you go to this spike of a high of laughter and then just calm back down. And I felt like when I came back to the to field, I felt I felt high, if I'm honest. I remember seeing Chloe. She looked at me and she's just like, what are you on? It's half 12. I was just like, this is laughter, literally, you know, and and, and since to have a laughter practice you know I don't drink anymore you know I haven't drank for nearly two years I haven't mm-hmm. done any other sort of things that you know I might have done in the past um because I use laughter as that that natural endorphin rush basically mm. and you did something else a few weeks ago didn't you I did I did a little run as well a little run <laughs> a little uh, run so I ran the little run so yeah I ran the London marathon as well so uh yeah, which again is another endorphin rush. Uh, maybe not at 22 miles, it wasn't. But it requires it was, uh, a bit more effort than, than <laughs> 40 minutes of laughter, I think. But yes, yeah, so really. no benefits, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, okay, and I guess that moment when you thought, okay, I'm going to lean into this, what what was that about? How did you see the business potential of, um, oh, I can do this, I can actually become an expert and I can create this as an income stream? Yeah, so do you know what? I think the first time... I saw it. So I'm, I know this is an organic thing. Can you hear the blender in the background or not? I actually can't, no. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, that's good then. That's My good. So the house was shaking yesterday. They were drilling. I'm pretty sure people can hear that, but I can't hear anything. I can only hear you. Really focused on you. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, so so when I first discovered it and then I, it was the follow, it was 2018 then or what, what, like 17, I went back and did all three four days of this session and I was like actually I need more of this and that was for my well-being mm. and then I started using it as a mechanism for um when, when I was at work basically I would laugh in the morning with some people online and then be able to sort of create my email for the week create mm. some video content create marketing material basically because when you laugh you're creative brain opens and it mm. just all of a sudden you're just from writer's block you're like yeah wow wicked. and it, it's like a lot of energy so but then in 2019 I started looking into it a bit more and just sort of seeing what everyone else was doing in the in the world because it, you know laughter yoga is a thing that is out there there's a lot of people that do it but no one I could see was really marketing themselves mm. as well as and brand, you know, brand identity as well. So it was, it was a very much, I think I'd taken the 12 years of business that I'd learned and, you know, don't get me wrong, day one of my business was a bit like, yeah, we'll go out and work and we'll get paid nothing for it. And this would be really good because we're working for ourselves. Yeah. But you grow. And so, <laughs> you know, so I, I basically came along with the marketing headspace of just thinking, well, wait there, if I, if I go into, a, if I offer this to for free to a company, but let me bring a video guy with me or let me video on my phone mm. I started doing these little videos and then people started like their eyes sort of pricking up in their mind a little bit thinking actually this is a thing and soon I suppose looking at all the other laughter yogis out there now there are there's two types of laughter yogi there's the businessy type and there's the spiritual type because ultimately yoga is a spiritual mm. thing um, but they don't know how to market themselves, bless them. And they're lovely, lovely people, but they, you know, and I've just come along from sort of nowhere and just gone, boom, this mm. is this is what we do. And and what was quite interesting actually is when it was World Laughter Day 
in 2020. So I, I did this. There's a giggle phone. This exercise, right, Anna? We should do it now, really, right? Okay. Where you get your phone. It's the funniest yeah. thing you've heard all day. You put it to your ear and you just start laughing like this. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this exercise called the giggle phone. And what I did, I, I decided to take it from here, put it to my ear and then pass it on. And then I passed it around the world to it was about 900 people in the end all these oh different goodness. laughter yogi people we went to like nearly 78 countries so i've just got this hour and a half of this video of just people laughing and passing this phone and i sort of just all of a sudden realized at that point there's wait there I, i've gone from nobody knowing me to like actually everybody wanted to be on my video so it was sort of quite quick there that i knew that actually there was a I'm just digressing a little bit. Here, no, no, not I, at really, all. But... To be honest, you're sounding like a marketing genius to me. So it sounds like you really saw an opportunity. You saw a problem that you could solve in a way, and there's, there mm. are benefits that you can bring with that. You saw that yeah. actually there's a bit of a niche, and, I, and I've told you this before. I think I always think of you. I always give you as an example to my clients of an incredible niche. I'd never come across it before, and I 100% associate this with you. And now I know more about it. You'd be the yeah. first person, of course, I'd recommend for that kind. Of, and the fact that you're able to create a viral video is the dream for anyone in marketing way so that all sounds very easy can you talk us through some of the challenges you came across in in the last year or so of of getting this up and running and actually generating income from it yeah sure so I think the okay first challenge was sort of I suppose just believing it that I could do it that was probably my first challenge at at the beginning and especially sort of you know no disrespect to my lovely wife Chloe love her to bits but she was very much like at the beginning it's not for everyone Pete not everyone wants to yeah, laugh for no reason enough. at all, yeah. which was fair. But then I was the mindset. It's like, everyone needs to try this because it's amazing. It makes you feel good. And then I started. So that was the first challenge is sort of getting over the fact that don't try and push it on everybody. Mm. Just push it out there and just naturally people will be attracted mm. to what I'm doing. Um, the second challenge was then like monetizing it. So working out I mean when I first started going out I was like right half an hour session 97 pounds let's just put it out there and like people yeah 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 right then I put it up to 147 then I went up to 187 then I went up to 247 then I went up to three and started losing and then I was like okay bang so so you know I I took my I suppose calibrating kind of yeah exactly and then and then then sat at 247 and just believed in my own abilities and and don't get me wrong there are times where people go well that's really expensive and I'm like that's fine but that's what I'm worth for, for mm-hmm. coming and do this for you. So, um, and then I think one well, of the other challenges has been, uh, I, I'm i all or nothing, Anna. You know, that that's the way I am. So as soon as I started sort of thinking, right, I need to market this. So like, I started a podcast mm-hmm. virtually straight away. That, that was actually off the back of the, the giggle phone, actually. I was like, right, I know all these laughter yogis, so I'm going to interview them, mm. start a podcast, and just interview laughter yogis and then quite soon realize that actually these laughter yogis don't really do know what they're doing when it comes to sharing and all this stuff. But anyway, mm-hmm. so, but I've got this podcast now. I, I've, I started blogging. I started, then I started doing a YouTube channel. So I'm trying to do it all. And one of the other lessons I learned quite probably about six months in was actually YouTube's a hard nut to crack uh, the way I was doing it because a lot of people were well, not a lot of people, but, but the person that I was talking to um, who was helping me with, with sort of guiding me into the YouTube world. It's like, I really think this is going to take off Pete. And it just didn't. And I was mm. throwing nearly, it was nearly a thousand pound a month at this mm-hmm. thing, just getting proper edited and stuff. And, and so I suppose learn what I've learned is that you just, just work out what channels work for you. Because again, I had someone managing my Instagram account for me um, off the back of Clubhouse. It was all, yeah, mm. just I was everywhere. I was like, right, on Clubhouse, I'm on Instagram, I'm over. Mm. And and again, sort of my outgoings were more than my in- incomings for probably a couple of months. It was just like, wow, this is all level. It's fine. I'm not making mm. money, but I'm Breaking getting even, exposure. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's just like, wait there, I'm losing money now. This is costing me money. And I was like starting to really sort of feel it and, and sort of then decided to take the the decision to switch off the YouTube channel and switch off um, my Instagram uh, marketing team, basically, who was running it and just start doing things that, wait there, I know LinkedIn works. I know going on to podcasts mm-hmm. works. I know this works. And actually just focusing my energy on a, what I really enjoy doing, but B, what I know is going to actually get me customers into my into my pipe, basically. 
I guess there's a bit of trial and error that comes there because I'm like you. I also got very excited by what everyone says. You need a podcast and and Instagram. I was on Clubhouse briefly and then also took a step back. Saying no to channels is quite hard, isn't it? Especially when you've already started. It's all very well to start from a clean slate and, and focus. But once you've got it, it's quite a big, brave decision to step back. So that sounds amazing that you've done that, I guess. Have you, through those challenges of sort of mindset and monetization and then focus, is that it sounds again like something that you've just discovered through trial and error and you've learned or have you worked with someone who's advised you have you been part of community that have support you know where have you got the support yes. other than I'm sure from your wonderful wife Chloe as well but uh, where are you getting yeah. the support to get you over these hurdles so you know obviously we know each other through the youpreneur so mm-hmm. that's one community that I belong to but I've also you know when when I used to be belong to a company uh, uh, a marketing company called the entrepreneur circle and then off the back of that i've met loads of business owners so actually i've got quite a lot of sounding boards out there mm. so i and i'm quite open to just picking up the phone and just saying hey look, i've got this idea or people you know just just asking sometimes Adam, my problem is i listen to people too much that mm. could be a bit of a and i just go oh i'll go over it yeah that's I'll do that yeah, yeah that's shiny <laughs> object syndrome absolutely <laughs> It's, um, so yeah, but I think my my heart as well, you know, is it, something that I do believe in the the, the feeling that I get oh. from things as well. So if something doesn't sit right, I'll just pull the plug on it because actually it'll make it. And and going back to the YouTube, it was like it wasn't it it wasn't just the money. It was a lot of energy that I was putting into this. And as soon as I pulled the plug on it all of a sudden I just had this time and I would just remember walking around the house a little mm. bit and Chloe bless us in the other uh, in the other office just getting on with the work and I just sort of lurking around and she's like you're right and I was like yeah I haven't really got anything to do today she's like well you can make lunch I was like I'll go and make lunch then not a problem and I just sort of had all this headspace all of a sudden oh and, wow you know it's it's I think it's really important to actually have that headspace in business definitely because you know we can all do 70 80 90 hours a week quite easily we, especially when it's a passion project you mm. can get really sucked in quite quickly but you need that space to be able to step back and actually look at what's working and what's not working and you know i think again that going back to youtube that was definitely a, a realization it's just like, like that's all costing me a lot of money and it's costing me a lot of time mm. whereas actually now when the money comes in i'm now starting to pay a pay myself B, you know, the game plan is I'm, I'm going to put our children through school, basically, mm-hmm. with my laughter. So the main business will pay, I say the main business, the chef agency is mm-hmm. going to pay our lifestyle. And then I'm going to laugh our kids through school. Um, just just even just for the, the you need a bumper sticker mm-hmm. saying that, I think. <laughs> exactly. Laugh the kids <laughs> through school. You know, just think, I, I just got, yeah, that that vision of like when one of the, one of my you know, my Neela, my eldest friend, goes to her. I'm like, what does your dad do? She's like, he laughs. <laughs> She's like, that's that's it. But you know, I'm not sure if you saw. I I got onto a big stage. Um, I did, was, very big stage. Yeah, yeah, Huge, packed so, audience. Yeah, so you know, again, that was something that off the back. So I mentioned the Entrepreneur Circle. So that was that company basically, and it was, you know, just. Again, it's something that I can foresee, you know, I can see me doing. That's mm. where I, I, I see myself is on those stages, on those big auditoriums, yeah. uh, just just energizing the audience. And and that was the first time I've ever done anything that big. I've, I've DJed in front of that many people before when, in my past, um, but just me, a microphone and just my skills, it was a little bit like, whoa. Um, but the energy that came from that audience and uh, and also the the I've had five jobs off the back of it already, you know. So it just it shows that actually if you're out there mm. and you're present, and and also what I do is you know it's how I make people feel, you know. Mm. It's, it, people remember how they feel when they when they're mm. in my company. So it's yeah, it ticks all the boxes, Anna, for me. Do you know that's such an important reminder? Just going back to what you said, and I'm so happy to hear that it does tick those boxes, and that you're able to balance those two to be able to do what you love and make a difference while also having the other income still still going. Um, as you said, taking a step back and actually having time to see what's working because it's so easy to get into reads. It reminds me of when I initially tentatively sort of outsourced a few of my like blog scheduling, social media emails. 
my, my week suddenly opened up and I wasn't doing anything. I thought, first of all, amazing. But also secondly, now I get why I'm not earning a lot of money because I've just been spending all my time just doing sort of the back end stuff that doesn't really get any clients. And it's such a powerful thing. And it's so easy to, I've got to be on Clubhouse and I've got to do videos and I've got to do this hustle, 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 and not have that um, elevated perspective. So that sounds really mm. um, important and insightful. What are the best parts of your lifestyle right now? Then I think you've already given us a bit of a hint, but what would you say now versus where you were a few years ago? Okay, so the first thing is definitely laughter. Mm. It's been, you know, I, I I do laugh on Clubhouse every morning, Monday to Friday for 10 minutes. Uh, that's all I use Clubhouse for now. But, mm. you know, it, it's so it just sets me up, sets me up for the day. And if I don't laugh, I actually feel the difference. Mm. Um, so my lifestyle, you know, that um, just and just doing what I love doing. So so I think sort of rewind back to the moment where I went, I could actually make some money mm. out of this. It was just like, right, A, A, it's ticking a lot of boxes. It's tick, ticking the showman. I used to DJ. I used to, you know, I used to how make people feel from making different music. Um, but also a bit of centre of attention. I'm not going to lie, you know. I like I like to be, you know. But also how I make people feel. So when, yeah. when you know, but actually some, yeah, this, this, this thing came along and went, right, this, this makes people feel good. If you use this, you can make people feel good and actually you can do all these things. And it, it was just, yeah. So basically I'm just doing what I love doing and yeah, and getting paid for it, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's the paying. dream. It is the dream. It is the dream. And it's, you know, don't get me wrong. I still like, I'm chasing a little bit, right? I'm going to chase that. I'm going to chase that. And I'm just mm. got to be a bit conscious because I, I am chasing squirrels a little bit still, you know, that shiny tool of squirrel. Oh, I'm off over there, but yeah. it's 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 working out like I suppose going back to like the youpreneur and the ecosystem side of things, which has been really useful to go because I, I I sort of knew it anyway. You know, get my book. I need a book. Mm -hmm. That's my next next yeah. big thing. So, but getting on stage mm -hmm. and then getting you know getting my 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 behind the scenes stuff going. So I've got like different ways people can pay me money for laughter mm -hmm. basically, and obviously the closer they get to me, the more they they pay basically. Mm. And what advice would you give someone perhaps like you who unfortunately was hit during the pandemic or on the more positive side started thinking, hey, maybe I could turn this sort of almost hobby into a business or they have that idea. What, what advice would you give now looking back on that time? I would say plan in your mind, like take, take a day off mm. or a few hours off, like a day's better. Just get out of your own head and just work out what you want your life to look like. Mm. I actually think like, and you know, it's, it's quite a deep thing, but you know, where, where, where do you see yourself doing? What would you really, really, really want to do? And it's not going to happen tomorrow or the day mm. after, but if you know what that destination is, everything that you're doing is just going to aim to that destination. Mm. You're not going over to the left or right. You're just aiming straight for that, that vision. And that's, my advice is, is have a good vision and a vision. I'm a big vision board man as well. So I know exactly, yeah, you know, the, the London marathon has been on my vision board for the last three years. It's a big tick on it now. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's, and believing in it and, and don't get me wrong. It's going to be hard. It is going to be hard. And, and if you've, if you've got the money coming in from somewhere else, mm. then try and take time out a little bit you know, so say i don't know you've got a full-time job but you've got this passion project on the side do the evenings and weekends on the passion project and then try and maybe do one day less a week with the main job and then slowly bring your passion project in and then once you've done your numbers like once you've reckon you've got two maybe three months of mm -hmm. you know capital in the background just yeah i would just bite the bullet and just go you know covid did it for me just whipped yeah. whipped it out and i had to do it but just do it just believe in your own abilities because if you if you can if you've had been paid to do what you do as a passion there's a demand for it mm. that's music to my ears it's so easy to get caught up in the how of what's how's it going to work without really having taken that time as you said and the day doesn't sound too hard to really envision okay what do i want to be doing there's no point in going after something and then okay you succeed and you look around hang on a second this isn't where i wanted to be and i love the really practical advice as well do the maths so understanding okay income how no one's going to force you to quit your job tomorrow right so mm -hmm. if it really is something you want to do you might have to in the short time term 
work a little bit extra there. But then, as you said, if you get to the point where you think, oh, I think I might be able to do it, that's uh, then just do it. I love that. And what's on your vision board now then? So my vision board is uh, best-selling author is yes. number one. Um, that's moved to Cornwall. I was on there. There's mm. lots of different bits, so bodyboarding and the kids are at school, at Truro School. Uh, what else is on the vision board? Um, the, the usual eating green is obviously, it's always there. It's been there for a while, but I've been vegan okay. 95% of the time for quite a long time now. So, um, the and, and actually what we're talking, the biggest one is 2,000 people from stage. That's mm. my big, Okay. That's my big goal. 2001 stage. Uh, 2000 people from stage, yeah. So so that one that you and and actually there's there's a good chance that's going to happen in January February, but I'm not allowed to oh, say what it, it is. Ticking it off already in January February. Yeah. That's good vision boarding. <laughs> yeah, so it's um but I mean the big the big vision actually is San Francisco 2000 people because the uh, San Francisco because a friend of ours works for EA Sports over there mm-hmm. um and we haven't seen him for ages, so it'd be nice to go to San. We've never been to San Fran, but I've, I visualised Chloe sat in the auditorium, me looking down at her, just going, "Here we go." <laughs> um, but then the kids are at boarding school just for that evening, you know, that weekend. So because they're at Truro School, which means that that's the that's the private school, so they've got the boy. There's lots of facets in there, which is Cornwall. So yeah, but the San Francisco is the end bit of that. But then that's also then a springboard into mm-hmm. you know, the, the states and obviously, um, yeah, whatever that brings to me. So, uh, yeah, no, it's exciting. It's so exciting, so inspiring, but also sounds feasible. I, I'm, I have no doubt that you're going to get there. So that's so exciting. And also that you've, you're have you not just, and this is, again, music to me, is you're not just looking at business, business, business. You're actually looking at, you know, the lifestyle for your family, where you're going to live, um, your fitness, mm-hmm. your your health and so on. So that's that's great news that you're making all these changes and and doing so well doing it so but Pete thank you so much for time I'm, I'm so excited to have learned more in fact about laughter yoga I did also wonder about the yoga so I get the breathing now um where can we read more if somebody is wanting to join some of your sessions maybe they work in a company where they think yeah we really need to bring Pete in we need some of that laughter how can we find out more what's the next step? Well, well I'll tell you what Anna what we'll do before I tell you that we'll do one mm-hmm. laughing exercise for for you and and the listeners and it's a really easy one um but it, yeah this is a feeling so what we're going to do is we can take a deep breath in and we're just going to let out a long ha okay so deep breath in we're just going to go ah. and that's all laughter is it's just a how and an out breath but we're going to do lots of hows now we're going to take a deep breath in and this if you're listening do this as well please take a deep breath in we're going to hold it for five seconds and then we're going to laugh for 10 like it's the funniest thing that's heard all day so deep breath in Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and... (laughs) (laughs) I see what you mean. I really felt my lungs getting empty there for a moment. That's that's an unusual feeling for me. Thank you so much, Pete. What a lovely note to end on and and showing you how simple it is. I am smiling and laughing, uh, continuing on. So thank you so much for demonstrating that so beautifully. It's my pleasure. So yeah, if anyone wants to reach out to me, best place is petecan.com. That's C-A-N-N for November. And all my other bits are on there. So, but come and say hello and let me know that you've obviously listened to this and um, I would love to bring laughter to your life. Oh, what a beautiful way to end. And if anyone can, Pete can. That comes to mind for me. What a great name. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Are you ready to build and scale your business to achieve everything you dreamed of when you started without sacrificing your personal life and your sanity to do so? The truth is that escaping the nine to five is not just about saying I quit to your boss or putting up a website and ordering a set of business cards. A sustainable escape requires you to design and build a viable business that consistently brings an income and that fits in around the other priorities in your life. Join us in the Outsiders Business Accelerator to get ongoing coaching, training and mentoring to help you create a long-term brand and business that works for you. Read more and apply at onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash accelerate.